Hi everybody, it's Diana with StampingWithDi.com. Welcome to my YouTube channel and this week's Teach Me Tuesdays 169. Thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to my channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Diana and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm in Santan Valley, Arizona. So I come to you um, live. I am watching off to the side in the chat room. Um, so if you have any questions, make sure you um, ask me over there. If you're watching a replay, then just leave me a comment below and then YouTube will let me know that you um, have made a comment or maybe a question so I can reach out. So. Um, I had so much fun yesterday with the cheerful basket bundle that I wanted to play with it even more. So that's what we're going to do today. I have a couple cards to share with you. And it is such a cute, cute set. And you can put other things in it than just what comes with the stamp set. Because it's got like the cute little apples. It has the hearts. I'm trying to see what else it has. Oh, it has the fun little, um, like a craft basket. So I need to play with it more and do those as well. But, um, so I'm going to do one where I used a totally different stamp set. So I want you to think outside of the um, basket when you are using this um, stamp set. So a lot of you said um, that you hadn't got this one yet or it was on your wish list um, or it was on your wish list and you took it off, now it's back. So I love to hear that when I do um, my videos because it, I am the same way. Like there's sometimes when I'll see something I'll go, no, I don't really need that. And then I'll see somebody use it and then I'm like, okay, now I need that in my stamp cupboard. So hopefully that's the same with you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop blabbing. Close your eyes while I get adjusted. All right, let's see here. So, ooh, that looks half straight there. Okay, so we are going to use, like I said, the cheerful, um, cheerful basket. Now today, because it does have a die, but I'm not gonna use the die today. I'm just going to use the stamp set. And then I'm also using the um, Share the Milkshake for my greeting on the one card. All right, so I have a few things going on here since I have two cards. And I am making note cards. So these are our fun little note cards. They are um, Whisper White note cards and, event and envelopes. And it's like 20, so they're already scored. They have the cute little envelopes. The three and a half by five is the finished size. And they're just great. And this stamp set is perfect for it. It's a great size. I'm also, again, using that Country Gingham DSP. So that's going to go on the inside that piece. I also used the Deckled Rectangles for it as well. All right, so what we're gonna do is I wanna stamp on my cute little deckled rectangle. I'm gonna be using the blends, so I am using the memento pad. And I'm also gonna do the apples again because they're so adorable. All right, so we want to stamp our basket. And I inked this up, so hopefully I didn't get it too juicy. All right, so we're gonna stamp our basket. That looks good. I also wanna stamp my basket on some scrap paper. So I'm gonna stamp two of them. just because all right so one and two okay let those dry all right so let me bring the apples over so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stamp the apples right on the basket. So I'm going to put these apples 
right in the basket. So we've got our apples in the basket. Now I'm going to bring this cute little life is sweeter with you. And I want to put that above. And this is where it came from that share the milkshake stamp set. going to go over here. I love using photopolymer for greetings because then I can see exactly where I'm stamping. Okay, so life is sweeter with you. All right, so I'm going to let that dry just a second and let's cut these apart just so I'm not dragging my hand over top of that while I'm coloring. All right, so we have some colors. Now I've added some different ones than the other day. I've added some similar, but I want to give the basket a different look than we used the other day. So I am going to start just like I did the other day with number 600. And I'm just going to quickly color in the basket with the 600. like that and this line as well but today's basket I'm going to change the look of it by making it these um, wood pieces are going to be a different color and it totally gives it a very cool look you can hear my squeak squeak I love the sound of a squeaky marker. Means I'm having fun. All right, so that was number 600. Then I'm gonna take number 400. So just like I did the other day, and I'm gonna do 400. And I'm just kinda doing some lines. I'm gonna go underneath the handle because it would have a shadow there. And also here, this basket is so fun. You can put so many things in it. Just look through the catalog and you'd be amazed at what you can put in this basket. All right. So that looks good. Then I'm going to take number 300 and it's pretty dark. And, and I'm going to take this off, or at least flip it over. I'm going to flip it over so that you don't have the lines. And that might help the camera not be so confused too. All right, so this is number 300. And I just want it to be dark around this corner. Because it would, as that basket goes around, it would be dark around there. So just tap, tap, tap. And then every once in a while, I'll just draw a straight, straight out. And then up underneath where these ones come down. Okay, and along the bottom would be dark as well. Okay, now when I'm doing the center, basket I'm gonna go dark so dark so seafron and I'm gonna color all of these dark seafron saf oh my god so saffron all right let me get that camera to um what you might call it focus when I show the letters, it wants to focus, which is good. That's its job. But anyways, okay. So that was the dark saffron. And then I want to take light Cajun. And we're going to go around this side here with Cajun. And kind of down from the top where this meets 
where it would overlap and have a bit of a shadow. And down here too. I'm just adding that underneath because it would have a shadow line there. So we're going to play around with our basket a little bit more today than I did yesterday. Because yesterday I colored it a little faster and then I had a lot more fun with it when I was adding some more colors. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to show you that as well. So that if you are still on the fence about the basket, maybe this will make you go, I need that set. Okay, so now we have dark pale papaya. And I'm gonna go right over top where that Cajun was. And I love pale papaya and Cajun together. They complement each other so well. And it just softens those lines. But it makes the basket almost glow in areas where the, where the um, saffron is. But it just softens those Cajun lines. And I'm just leaving that saffron in there. Because you don't want to color at all, or you might as well not have put the saffron. But see how that center of that basket looks kind of like glowing? So it looks pretty cool. All right, so let's take our smoky... All right, so I want my granite handle. So that's light gray granite and dark gray granite. And then let's take, what is this? My dark smoky. So our handle is gonna have, you know, some color to it because I'm just using that handle. All right, so let's look at our basket and see if we want to add anything else. So what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of um, the smoky slate to the basket. So around the corner, I'm going to put a little smoky just on the edges here. And that's just going to darken that Cajun just a tad. And then we'll go back and we'll add a little bit more Cajun. for that color. And that's what's so fun about the markers because the Stampin' Blends, because you can mix and match and add and take away and it doesn't really um, hurt your paper. If you were to do this with the, now this is dark gray granite and I'm just going down these lines here, which is gonna emphasize them. If you were to do that with, you know, a stamp and write marker, you would just have lines and it would also tear your paper. All right, so this is the light gray granite and I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna go right underneath here. And that will just make this, these lines, these pieces right here visually pop off and make it stand out and if you want to soften it you can just take your go back with your Cajun but now so when you see when you look at it see you have that shadow underneath there so it makes that this is standing out it's standing away from these right here so what we can do is we can get our 300 which is that dark and to emphasize it even more we can put a little bit of the dark up here and here And then we'll get our 600 and just soften it just a little bit. All right. So let me lift that up again. So see, isn't that cool? Oh, 
I love to color. Okay, so that looks good. So let's bring our apples over. Now I colored the apples yesterday. So I'm gonna color them just really, really simple. But if you missed yesterday, then this is gonna be kind of a recap for you. All right, so I'm gonna take my 600 and we're gonna color on the apple just some 600 just to make our apple have a couple different um, poppies so this is just going to give my poppy a third color by putting this underneath we also want to just put a little bit of color on the basket here just a little bit no one's going to see this but just in case they can see a little bit then you won't have this white basket back there and then i'll just take the cajun and do the same thing so whatever color you did on the other basket just have it be the same and you'll see why in a minute. You don't have to color it all beautifully, just the edges. Okay. I also, let's see, I want my light gray granite. So we're gonna take my light gray granite and I want to draw on the left side of my apples. This is going to make them pop off the page and visually look like I have cut them out maybe. We also want to do the same thing to our basket. And then let's put a line under here like that and just a little bit there. I'm just like looking to see if I missed anything. Looks pretty good. All right, so let's go back to our, our apples. So we have our dark poppy parade. And just like I did yesterday, so now we're gonna do the dark poppy and we're coloring them right over top where I put that number 600. But I'm also going out just a little bit so that there's that third poppy parade color. And then we'll finish it with the light. So hopefully, you know, if, if you're on the fence about the stamp set, maybe you're on the fence about the Stampin' Blends in general, and you're not too sure, hopefully this gives you a couple little tricks and you'll realize that they're not that hard now keep in mind you are going to get some stamp and blends if you sign up for my adorable owl class in april and if you have the ones that i'm picking like if, then you can just choose you know different colors all right so that looks good and then i'll do the light and I'm going down into the basket just a little bit. And again, you'll see why in a minute. All right. Okay, and right there. Then I want my parakeet. So I have my dark parakeet and my light parakeet, like I did yesterday but i'm going to add some different greens and this would look cute i kept this one fairly simple and i did all of my apples red you could do um some green apples you know if you wanted as well all right so that was light parakeet then i'm going to do dark parakeet but i'm also going to add some granny apple I'm going to do some, where's my dark granny? Dark granny, there, there he is. All right, so dark granny as well, coming out of there. 
and I love granny and parakeet together. Oops. I went right out of that line. All right. Now, what you also want to do is I want you to take the 600 and I want you to put a little bit of this on your leaves. So if you've ever noticed as the leaves grow, they have a little brown on them. So I'm just putting a little brown on my leaves as well. And it's hard, it you see it but you don't really know like what you're seeing, right? Like your eye just goes, that looks cool, but you don't really realize, oh, there's some brown in there. All right, so there is that. Now, let's cut this out. Now, it does have a dye, it does have a dye, but I don't want that white border that the dye will put on there. So I'm just gonna fussy cut so that I'm right along the edge. Really easy. And then to get that white edge away, because even though you're cutting it, you know, right on the line, it still has that white edge if you miss a spot, but you can see the cardstock on the side. And I'll show you how to get rid of that. All right, so around that corner. And like that. All right, so, cause what I mean by is you can see this white edge of the, of the paper, see that? So even though I cut it on its line, when you turn it, you see that white edge. And I don't wanna see that. So I'm gonna take my dark smoky slate and I'm just gonna leave this lay down on my um, grid sheet and I'm just gonna trace it. So I'm just gonna go around the edges and I'm tracing this. And what happens is that white edge will kind of suck up some of that um, that blend or that stamp and blend. Oop! I'm gonna have to get a new dark. All right, it's enough for for that. All right. And you can hold it up like this and do it too. But I find if I do this, I have a little bit more control, and I don't by accident go like this, right? Because you don't want to have a a big line through there so by doing this I find like it still does the same job and I'm just a little more control with what I'm doing but now you don't see that white edge right I can see it a little bit right there all right and it could be because I needed a new marker but anyways so Look how cute that basket is. Love it. All right. Now, what we're going to do is, let me get this out here. We're going to glue it with glue dots directly on the card. So that's why I stamped it this way. So I knew right where the basket needed to be. I knew right where the apples needed to be. I knew right where my greeting needed to be. And then we're going to take our glue dots. And I'm putting them right along the edge. So this will cover it. But that's also why I colored this a little bit, just in case, because this is a glue dot. It does give you a tiny, tiny little bit of dimension. I didn't want it to be a, a dimensional because it would stick up way too high and then you could see underneath it. And I didn't want to be able to see that basket underneath there, even if it did have a little bit of color. So now we're going to glue this right here, but this also, by stamping that basket on there, it tells us exactly where this needs to be glued. And look how amazing that looks. Doesn't that look cool? All right, so let's bring our card over. So this is, like I said, this is one of the little note cards, and these are great to have on hand. I love having note cards on hand. And you can mail them in the envelope that that they come with, or you can just simply pop it in like one of our A4 envelopes or whatever they are. All right, so this is that country gingham, like I used yesterday, but I think I used a different pattern today. All right, I'm gonna put this on with dimensionals, but before I do that, I wanna take my gel pen. I think this is dried long enough. I'm gonna take my handy dandy gel pen, and you know I talk about my gel pen all the time. 
<laughs> we don't have them in the catalog. Hopefully, I it's I always ask for us to have them back, but I do just grab them off of Amazon. So I'm gonna put a little line on my apples just so they have a little shine. We could also put Winkostella on them. That would be cute. But I also want to put a little bit on my basket. So I'm going to put a few little marks here and there on my basket. And I think that this just really brings it to life as well. Like that. And me and my little dots. But so I like the look of that. So that should be good and dry. And then let me get some dimensionals. So we're going to put some dimensionals. One, two, three, four, five. So this will stick off. And you could make this very easily into a regular size card, but I wanted to use the note card because it's the perfect size for this little um, deckled rectangle. All right, so let's put this on the inside. And I didn't put anything in the inside so that I have a nice card that I can write whatever I want. When the time comes, I can use it as a thank you card. And then I'll just put a post-it note in there so the person can use the card themselves. All right, so let's stick that in the inside. All right, easy peasy, but look how cute. And to me, I just love the look of it, how it looks like that basket, you know, has all that 3D. And really the only thing that is 3D, I guess what you would call it because I use dimensional or the glue dots, but it's just a flat, you know, flat basket, but I loved how it turned out. So here's the one I, was, I, I did earlier. So they look fairly simple. All right, so let me show you something else you can do. Remember I said you can put anything in this basket. So let me bring this over. So again, I'm using the gingham. And let me get a grid sheet. All right, so we're gonna do the very same thing. Now I'm not gonna complete this one all the way to the end. Like, I'm not going to finish it from start to finish. I'll show you the finished one done. Just because some of it is similar. All right, so we have our basket. So we'll stamp our basket on the card. Just like we did before. And then, of course, we have our basket off that we'll color. But this time... I wanted to put some flowers in it because doesn't this remind you of you know like somebody has um, wildflowers or whatever growing in an old um, apple basket or whatever so I wanted to do that and then the greeting I used was from color and contour um, but you could definitely just use the, the dainty you know dainty delight greetings okay so let's get our flowers now these flowers I'm using are this one, this one, and this one, and we're gonna fill our basket. But these are longer, and I wanna keep them within the card. So these would stick out that basket. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my grid sheet, and I'm just gonna fold it right over top. And then the cards just kind of, well, I don't wanna snuggle it that much, because I wanna be able to see my basket. All right. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing as I did before. I'm going to ink this up. Oops, what's that laying on? All right, there we go. So we're going to ink up our flowers. And I'm going to stamp them in my, whatchamacallit, in my basket. like that okay 
then let's do this one. And did we all decide this was Queen Anne's Lace? I think that's what we all decided. All right, so this is going to go here. So I'm not going to use that third one. Yeah, I'm not going to use this one. It will be too much. All right, so we'll let that dry. We'll turn this over. And like I said, I'm not going to do the whole because you've already seen me color the basket. All right, but let's bring our flowers. Let's make sure they're good and dry. And what we want to do is we want to kind of do the same thing. Sorry, I'm letting that dry. We want to do the same kind of thing as we did with our apples. And this time I'm going to use Pool Party. So I'm going to do my light Pool Party. And pool party is one of those colors that don't show very well on the camera, so I apologize. So I'm going to take my light pool party, and we're going to draw on the left side. And this will just visually make your eye see sky. I love pool party. It's one of my favorite, favorite, favorite. And we'll go down here just like we did the other one. So pool party is one of those go-to blues that I use for doing that shadow line as well as that gray granite. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing on the left side. And since this is a flower and it's very um, open and you know, there's a lot of, um, like space in here where the apples were solid. So I'm making my pool party marker be bigger. Like it's like a wider line so that it's kind of filling in that bare spot. I do want some white showing, but I also want it to have a lot of that pool party, pool party fitting in there. So that looks pretty good. All right, so let me lift it up. You may or may not be able to see it. Like I said, pool party is just, you can kind of see it. Pool party is just really hard. All right, and you don't want that shadow to be blinding you, right? You don't want it to be like, oh, wow, like, you know, she really shadowed that card. You don't want it to, to look like that. All right, so I'm going to get my granny and... My light granny. Okay, so we're going to do light granny and dark granny for our leaves. And I'm going right up the stalk of our leaves. This set is so pretty and it is so forgiving, so easy to color. Whether, whether you watercolor it, whether you... Um, you know, use your blends. It's just, it's just beautiful. Oops. Even when you color, even when you color one of the flowers green. All right, so we've got all of our leaves. I think I've got them all. And you can already see how pretty it's getting. All right, so that was light. And then we'll take the dark granny and we'll just add a little bit of dark here and there. No rhyme, no reason. Okay. Then I want to use my, what is this? Light flamingo and my dark. But these are fairly small, so I'm just gonna use the dark. And I'm going to put these flowers, whether that is a real flower, I don't know. But in my garden, it is. All right. So then we want our daffodil. So these ones are going to be yellow. And this one that I have colored green. So these are light daffodil. And then we'll go the dark to add a little bit of dark. All right, 
And I think what makes this card or makes these flowers is the Queen Anne's lace because it just, I just love how it finishes it off. So I'm going to do light Highland Tether. And I do not try to stay within the flowers. I want this to be full. So I go like even where there's no flower because I want it to be full. All right, so that's light highland. And then we're gonna come back with the dark and then just add a dark dot here and there. Okay. So look how cute that is. So there's your, your little garden. And let me bring you the finished one so you can see. So here's the finished one. And I did the little handle with balmy. This one I added some balmy around the outside. So you can see, you know, see what it should look like, right? When we when we color our um, basket. But I didn't want to, um, you know, waste your time and color two baskets because I kept them very, very similar. So let me show you all of these. So there's these two. Here's the third one. But, um, but yeah, so these are the ones I did today. But what do you think? And this one, I didn't have any room for a greeting, so I put it on the inside. You're absolutely amazing. And I didn't put anything on the inside here. But, so let me know what you think. All right, so let me say, see you later, alligator. All right, very, very good. So let me know what you think. Let me know. Um, because I could sit and color that basket all day long. In fact, I'm going to sit and I will finish that other flower card <laughs> because it's just screaming to be finished. So if there's ever anything you want me to show for my Teach Me Tuesdays, my Mimeograph Mondays, or my Dice Shorts, reach out and let me know. Um, and if there's ever anything um, question-wise that I have confused you or I wasn't clear on, which is easy for me to do, I get excited and I forget half the stuff I meant to say, just reach out. Not a big deal. Um, all right, so I'm going to stop blabbing and have a great night. And I will see you Friday for my dyes shorts. That's 3 o'clock Arizona time, same time, same channel. And remember, Arizona, we don't change our clocks. So if you are um, coming to me for the first time since um, the time changed, uh, that's why. Um, I'm, I'm different than maybe what you're used to. So it's still three o'clock in Arizona. All right, so I'm gonna say see you later for real. I'll see you Friday. Have a great night. Bye for now.